Blackbeard the Pirate was a notorious marauder who operated in the West Indies and was feared across the Caribbean and the Atlantic, with merchants whispering his name in fright for fear of tempting fate and spawning an attack. Also known as Edward Teach or sometimes Edward Thatch, Blackbeard is easily the most famous pirate of all time, with his name, image and legacy becoming synonymous with our modern understanding of the golden age of piracy in the 17th and 18th centuries. Blackbeard is mainly known for his fearsome image, with a tall striking figure, fierce wild eyes and his unruly beard filled with lit fuses to give off a demonic appearance. His legend is vast with his deeds and exploits being remembered through history, but how did he get into piracy? What happened to all his treasure? And how did the notorious pirate's reign end? Well make sure to stick around because this short 7 minute documentary will cover all and more. And if you like this video, please subscribe and let me know in the comments if there are any other topics you would like to see me cover. Not that much is known about Blackbeard's early life, and much is left to speculation. In fact, we're not even sure if Edward Teach was his real name, with pirates often using pseudonyms when committing acts of piracy so as to protect their family members back home. Before he committed to a life of piracy, Edward is believed to have been a British privateer during the War of Spanish Succession. Privateers were essentially state-sanctioned pirates who held a paper called a Letter of Mark, which would commit them to carry out asymmetrical military activities, sailing in privately owned armed ships with the goal of robbing merchant vessels and pillaging settlements of rival countries. Employing privateers was a popular tactic for the British Empire to supplement their navy and keep control of trade across the Atlantic Ocean, and was expanded greatly during the Spanish War succession in 1701-1713, with a large increase in letters of mark being issued to privateers by the British Empire, with the express intent to disrupt the activities of the Spanish and the French. After the war ended, a lot of the privateers were no longer required by the British Empire. However, the privateers grew wealthy from their semi-legal raiding activities and were hard for to give it up and decided to keep up their marauding activities instead, going against the British Empire and beginning the golden age of piracy. It's very likely that Blackbeard was one of those privateers turned pirates. Blackbeard's reputation began to grow when he settled on the island city of Nassau, a self-declared pirate republic set up by Benjamin Hornigold, whose crew Blackbeard joined around 1716. Hornigold placed him in charge of a sloop that had been captured and the two engaged in a year-long campaign of raiding and piracy across the Caribbean Sea, which saw them begin to build a fleet. However, towards the end of 1717, Hornigold retired from piracy, ending their partnership. Blackbeard's movements around late 1717 and early 1718 were unclear. There are, however, a couple of attacks it's believed he was responsible for, but it's not 100% certain it was him. However, by May 1718, Blackbeard had amassed a big enough fleet to form a flotilla and had awarded himself the rank of Commodore. His flotilla flew a black flag with a skull and commanded so much power he successfully blockaded the port of Charlestown in South Carolina, ransacking any and all ships. While in Charlestown, Blackbeard had gained word that several ships had left England with the express purpose to purge the British West Indies of pirates, causing him to start being more subtle in his activities. Eventually, Blackbeard's ship, the Queen Anne's Revenge, ran aground, leading him to part company with his pirate partners before settling in North Carolina, where he had then accepted a royal pardon on the understanding that he would never take up piracy again. As you can imagine, this didn't last long, and before you know it, Blackbeard was back at sea. However, the golden age of piracy was winding down, and his actions quickly attracted the attention of Governor Alexander Spotswood, a man who would ultimately set the stage for Blackbeard's final battle. Alexander Spotswood, governor of Virginia, made it his mission to hunt down and capture Blackbeard. The governor was more than happy to finance the hunt himself, believing that Blackbeard was hoarding vast amounts of wealth. The unfortunately named Spotswood managed to gain intel of Blackbeard's whereabouts and made a plan to send his forces across the border into North Carolina to capture him. He gained the support of two men, Edward Mosley and Colonel Maurice Moore, who put together a force able to chase Blackbeard by land and sea. Maynard personally took command of two armed ships with a crew of 57 men split between the two and set off to reach the city of Bath, where it was believed Blackbeard was located. After searching night and day, Maynard found the pirates anchored on the inner side of Acrocoke Island in the evening of the 21st of November. Maynard waited until daybreak to move his two ships forward to attack. All traffic was stopped to prevent any warning of Maynard's presence and lookouts were posted to ensure Blackbeard could not escape to sea. However, Blackbeard was most likely expecting that authorities would catch up to him eventually and was too cunning to be easily sneaked up upon. And upon sighting the smaller scout ship sent by Maynard, Blackbeard opened fire from his ship, the Adventure, cut anchor and hoisted sails, quickly manoeuvring to point her starboard guns towards Maynard's advancing ships. 
Both tried to evade and chase each other for a while, but the inlet was tight, with Blackbeard nearly accidentally beaching his ship. But the adventure managed to turn its broadside onto Maynard's second ship and opened fire with devastating results. Maynard lost nearly a third of his forces, including his second and third officers, and that ship played no further role in the attack. It's unclear what happened next, but in the aftermath, Maynard's main ship managed to get within boarding distance of the adventure. Teach also noticed this and ordered his men to be ready, and shot grappling hooks across, bringing the ships into contact. Blackbeard's crew threw powder grenades onto Maynard's deck and boarded the ship as the smoke cleared. Jubilant at seeing Maynard's apparent small crew, the pirates opened fire. However, Maynard had cleverly laid a trap for Blackbeard. As in anticipation of a close contact fight, he had ordered the majority of his men below deck until the right moment. As Blackbeard's men boarded Maynard's ship, the rest of Maynard's men burst out from the hold, shouting and firing to Blackbeard's surprise. The move set the pirates on the back foot as the two crews fought across the deck of Maynard's ship. Both men found each other in the fight, opened fire on each other and, according to Maynard's journal, after missing, threw their flintlocks away. Dramatically, Blackbeard drew his cutlass and Maynard unsheathed his sword as the two engaged in battle. Maynard's men had superior training, outnumbered the pirates and managed to isolate Blackbeard from his men. The notorious pirate managed to break Maynard's sword with a ferocious strike of his cutlass. Blackbeard moved forward with another attack as Maynard tried to draw back, but before Blackbeard could strike, one of Maynard's men slashed him across the neck, badly wounding him. Without reply and in severe agony, Blackbeard was attacked by several of Maynard's men at once, who decisively saw to Blackbeard the pirate's final demise. The remaining pirates quickly surrendered and the adventure was captured. Maynard took time to examine Blackbeard's body after the battle, noting he had been shot five times and cut nearly 20. The head of Edward Teach was removed from his body and was suspended on show at the front of Maynard's ship so his reward could be collected. On his return to Virginia, the head of Blackbeard was placed on a pole as a warning to other pirates, staying there for several years. Blackbeard's loot, consisting of sugar, coca, indigo and cotton, was found in various places and sold at auction for a total of £2,238, which was the equivalent of over £250,000 in today's money. Spotswood managed to pay for the whole operation using the proceeds, with Maynard being handsomely paid. Ultimately, even though his death wasn't exactly glorious, Blackbeard still manages to hold a legendary status, and is probably the most well-known pirate ever. With his fearsomely crafted image much to blame for this, his wild untamed beard and the fuses that gave him a demonic appearance in battle. He's also responsible for many of the stereotypes we associate with pirates today, such as flying a black flag with a white skull. Despite the nature of his death, and despite not even being near some of the most successful pirates ever, Blackbeard's legacy lived on long after his death, with various superstitious tales being spread of Edward Teacher's ghost searching for his head, and odd, unexplained lights at sea being referred to as Blackbeard's light. And even up to today, with his likeness and name being featured in many books, films, TV shows across the world, cementing his status as the most legendary pirate to sail the seven seas. If you enjoyed my video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel where I'll be making more content like this. I really appreciate you watching and look forward to seeing you again next time.